Okay, let's talk about circling approaches. Now, this is similar to a traffic pattern, um, but you might ask the question, gee, why are we talking about circling um, an airport when I've just come in with an ILS or a GPS or a VOR guidance to a particular runway? Yes, that's true if you can land straight in, meaning the approach procedure that leads to the runway is the same runway that you can land on. But what if there's a limited amount of approaches to a certain airport. For example, maybe you have an ILS into runway 23 at XYZ Airport, but there's no approach procedure going into runway 5. That's the opposite end of runway 23. Well, you would have to fly the ILS procedure or the localizer down runway 23 until you catch sight of the airport and then you would need to circle the airport around to runway 5 and land runway 5. Be kind of like entering a downwind or a traffic pattern for that runway. You might have crisscrossing runways, one where it's served by an instrument approach procedure to both ends of that runway, and then maybe a little bit of a smaller crisscross runway, but the winds are favoring that runway, and it's just too much of a crosswind risk for you, so you decide to come in on an approach to the big runway and then break off that approach at a key point and circle around for the smaller runway. There's different reasons that you have to do a circle, but the main one is the winds aren't favoring the runway on your instrument approach. So you can come in on that approach, but then you break it off to find a different runway to actually land on. Could also be that the approach itself is not lined up with the runway. If it's more than 30 degrees off from the runway center line, then it will have circling minimums only doesn't actually mean you can't land straight in. Turns out if you have all of your requirements to go below MDA, you've got the runway in sight, you've got the visibility, you've got a normal descent. You can do that even though no straight in minimums uh, exist. But otherwise, when the final course is more than 30 degrees out of alignment with the runway, then that will be a circling to land maneuver. Or if the descent is too steep from the final approach fix to the runway, if it's more than a 400 foot per nautical mile gradient, then it will also have circling minimums only. So if the approach is coming in really steep from the final approach fix, or if it's not aligned with the runway, or the winds are not favoring the runway that you're coming in on, you're having a massive tailwind. If you have a 15, 20 knot tailwind, you do not want to try a landing. You shouldn't really try a tailwind landing really at all. You may have to then circle. Now, is it better to find a different runway served by a different approach? Maybe you, it's not an ILS, but it's an RNAV approach. It's a GPS approach, maybe even a VOR approach. It especially is better if you are in not so great weather conditions, IFR conditions, poor visibility, rain, precipitation, low ceilings. The worse the weather is, the more I don't want to circle. Also, is it day or night? That's going to be another consideration. Really don't want to circle at night. Am I familiar or unfamiliar with the airports? All of this can lead into my decision on circling or not circling, or even maybe going to a different airport if I need to. All right, let's look a little bit more detail on the circling approach. Number one, you must have the airport environment in sight. That phrase, airport environment, means actually anything on the airport. Does that mean the, the rotating beacon is part of the airport environment? Absolutely it is. If you've got the rotating beacon in sight, you may break off from that approach and circle the airport because you have the airport environment in sight. You don't have to maintain visual contact with the runway. That is actually better. So let's go up a notch from what's required. Let's have the runway that we're going to be landing on in sight as we circle, just like you would on a VFR traffic pattern. It's That traffic pattern is all in reference to the landing runway, right? But as far as the requirements go, all you need to have is the airport environment in sight. If you have a row of hangars, if you have the beacon, if you have the VASI light, if you have the runway and identifier lights, if you have something distinguishable about an airport, you can circle. Now, when you do circle, do the circling procedure, you have to use circling minimums, okay? Let's take a look at this excerpt from uh, Gainesville, Georgia, uh, ILS. Uh, here we see that the straight-in ILS runway 5 minimums uh, for all four categories of aircraft, A, B, C, and D, is 1476, that's your DA, and three-quarter mile visibility, which, by the way, that will bring you down to 200 AGL. If the glide slope's in up, then you're doing the straight in localizer only approach. So that means you'll be doing step downs and you'll level out at 1680. That's your final MDA. 
uh, and you need one mile visibility. But notice here below that is the circling minimums. And it doesn't say for what runway, it doesn't really matter. Um, there's two runways at Gainesville, Georgia, 523 and 11 and 29 er You can go to any of those runways, but the circling minimum must be kept at 1880 or above. So that means when you're coming down, you cannot go below the circling minimums in order to circle. So say you thought you were going to go to 1476 or even 1680, and then as you get closer, you you know you decide, gee, I I think I, I better circle to a different runway, and you're at about 1700 feet, let's say, on the altimeter. Well, that would mean you are uh, 180 feet lower than the circling minimum. So by by definition, you're actually operating below the required minimum, which necessitates a mist as we learned just moments ago. When do you have to miss? Anytime you're operating below MDA. You say, well, I'm, I'm above the MDA straight-in minimums for the localizer. Yes, that's true. At 1700, you would be, but you are below the circling minimums. And you cannot just simply climb up to the circling minimums. That would be encouraging us to do things that might not be so safe. So to discourage that, you have to stop at or above the circling minimums. So if you're not really sure what things are going to look like, how it's going to be when you get there, maybe you're not even sure how the visibility is going to be. So will you catch sight if you're coming down runway 5 uh, and making that approach? Will you see it in time in order to be uh, able to make a normal descent? You know, one good option is to actually keep yourself even a little bit higher at the circling minimums. You say, well, why would you do that? Then you'd be even higher. Well, by doing that, you can go all the way to the missed approach point, which in this case is actually I happen to know is the beginning of the runway five, the threshold. You have all the way up into the threshold in order to begin a circle. If you catch sight, you might be able to circle around and uh, take a downwind base and final and land the airplane. But again, in lower visibility, that also might not be too great of an idea because you may lose sight of the airport. And you may not lose sight of the airport at any time, the airport environment unless you're doing normal banking. So obviously if your wing is up, one wing's up, one's down, and that wing is blocking the view of the airport, that is the only time you're allowed to not be able to see the airport. But as soon as you lose sight, or if you lose sight with that airport environment, you are required to go missed. Here's kind of a general idea if you were uh, coming down in this case, like we said, to, let's say this is runway 5 on this end and you're shooting the ILS to 5 and you decide that you need to use 2-3 because the uh, winds are favoring a runway 2-3. Um, so for whatever runways it is, as you shoot down that approach, you maybe break it off to sort of a downwind type of uh, entry, left side left turns because if you're single pilot especially it's recommended that you do your turns to the left to keep a better eye on the airport and you notice you stay on that procedure for as long as you can so that you're in protected airspace and you're not cutting way out here across the landscape but you stay in get in there pretty tight and then deviate about maybe a 45 degree entry here so it's kind of like a reverse 45 to the downwind and then kind of get into your downwind and then make sort of more of a continuous turn uh, toward the runway. We want to keep things somewhat tight, not too tight, when we're doing a circling approach. Certainly don't want to have a big wide traffic pattern and lose sight of that airport, especially in lower visibility. One of your questions might be, so is there a particular pattern to fly when you're circling? Really there isn't. The most important thing to do is to do it safely. And generally speaking, I would say that most of the time you do a circle, it's either an en some kind of entry to a downwind, could be a left downwind or a right downwind. Again, ideally left turns a little bit better. Or a base. You see some examples here. Down here was the one we kind of just looked at, uh, see where you're shooting down uh, kind of with a tailwind on the instrument approach and then kind of do a reverse 45 to the downwind, swing a base to a final, kind of keep it in somewhat tight and land the airplane. Um, but you can see another option here on, on B would be if you were coming in at an angle more than 30 degrees from the, the center line and you maybe the visibility wasn't so hot so you didn't catch sight until a little later, you could fly over the runway and circle around either left or right downwinds and land the airplane. Again, not so great when the visibility is low to do all of this. 
Another uh, option would be if you're coming in at a really sharp angle, you can just swing in right over the top and do a, a left or a right downwind entry to a particular runway. I'm going to try it again, do left as much as I can. If I was coming in to land on this side, I might avoid the right turn, knowing if the obstacles are not bad between my, my approach here and the runway on this side, I might decide to just do sort of a base type of entry. Come across here and enter a base for this runway down here. Kind of like this one where you're coming in and the shortest path to get into this thing would be sort of a base, left base entry for this. So again, the safest way to a downwind or base type of entry. Now, another important consideration though with circling approaches is what is your AGL altitude of your MDA? Because all approaches are different. Some may have you higher, especially if there's mountains or obstacles you could be at 800 to 1,000 AGL, maybe, for example. Other approaches may have you only flying 500 feet above the ground. So it's also a consideration to think where you would be pulling back power and descending below MDA. Depends on your AGL altitude. Keep in mind, too, that VFR traffic may be present, especially if the field is still uh, VFR. Maybe it's marginal VFR. So this especially gets kind of interesting if you know your visibility is between three and five miles visibility. Not great, pretty murky conditions, but there could be somebody operating in marginal VFR traffic patterns while you're trying to do a circling approach. And you can come in any which way you want to. You could be on a right base when the traffic is definitely a left traffic pattern for that runway. You're legal to do that. Keep in mind, there might be somebody else doing something else. Visibility and lack of a horizon may complicate uh, this procedure. Yeah, that's why it's generally better to have better visibility and more closer to VMC type conditions if you're doing a circling approach, especially if it's into a field that you're not that familiar with. And if the visibility or the conditions aren't that great, you find yourself circling, keep relying on those instruments. Circling is a visual maneuver, but make sure you're managing your energy well. Make sure your airspeed is good. Uh, descent from MDA depends on the AGL altitude. We talked about that as well just a minute ago. Here's some suggestions for you. Kind of hinted at some of these already, but number one, avoid circling whenever possible. You know, the FAA and the airlines really kind of discourage circling maneuvers. Why? Because they admit it's dangerous. It is more risky. Why is it risky? Because you're doing your own maneuvering low to the ground with obstacles that you may or may not really understand and things get complicated when the weather isn't great and it's nighttime and it's maybe an unfamiliar airport. So avoid circling at night would be good advice. As well, don't circle at night at an unfamiliar airport. How much risk are you wanting to incur. Circle daytime only in VMC conditions. That's most of the airline's policy, actually. That's the airline's policy. They won't, They don't want their pilots circling if they can help it. So most airline policies are right here. Daytime only, VMC only. Has to be visual VFR conditions and day. Be confident that you won't lose sight of the landing runway. If you are going to do a circle to land, know the weather, know it's in VMC conditions or decent enough conditions. Maybe you're familiar with the airport, maybe it's daytime, maybe it's five miles visibility, but you decide, I'm okay at this because uh, this is my home base airport. I really understand the area. I'm not going to circle at night. It is daytime and I'm personally happy with five, six miles visibility to be able to do that. But again, these are all things that you have to weigh out the risk reward. Uh, plan your circle entry and let down point from circling MDA. Kind of talked about this a little bit. What you don't want to do is when you get to your circling point, you don't want to wonder what, what you're doing. You don't want to guess what's the best way to do this. You want to already have a plan. It should be part of your approach brief. You might say, let's go back to uh, this one here. Let's say we're coming down the ILS for this runway and we're going to be circling to a left downwind entry for this runway. So maybe part of my briefing is I'm going to say, okay, we're taking the ILS runway 5 down to whatever it is, 1,880 feet. I'll be entering a left downwind for runway 23, and I estimate pulling power back on base. Now, why did I say that? Well, I have two things I did. One is I told myself what I'm going to do. How am I going to circle? I'm going to enter the left downwind. But the other consideration a lot of pilots miss is where do I anticipate that I'm going to leave the MDA? 
See, if in a normal traffic pattern in VFR, right abeam the numbers, we were trained to pull the power back, add a little partial flaps, and start our letdown, start slowing down and adding flaps gradually, right? Well, that's about if you're at 800 to 1,000 feet, that works great, doesn't it? But if you're circling at only 500 feet AGL, then you're way too low to pull power and start down, aren't you? Even if you keep this in a little tighter than a normal traffic pattern. What are you typically at on a base leg in a VFR traffic pattern? Eh, maybe 500, right? 600 feet, maybe 700 feet if you're just a tad high. So it probably would be better to think in my mind expecting that I'm going to pull power, start adding the flaps if I haven't had a little in already on base. Why? Because I'm low. Now, if I'm circling at 1,000 AGL, well, then I probably will plan to pull power and go below MDA, abeam the numbers. Does that make sense? So we have a little bit more of an expectation of what we're going to do. Also, avoid having to miss from a circle. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, but that is not a lot of fun. And then use the next higher category minimums. So if you're a category A airplane, why not use category B minimums? They might be the same. Oftentimes they are, but the visibility might be a little higher. The MDA might be a little higher and it certainly doesn't hurt to do that. Sometimes you cannot uh, circle a certain side or of the airport, certain direction from the runway. For example, here in the NOS plate at Santa Monica, it says circling not authorized northwest of runway 321. So look at your airport diagram, see runway 321, and then think northwest of that runway. That's a no-fly zone for your circle. So it means you have to do a base or a downwind somewhere other than that. And when you look at that diagram, it's really handy if you just put a big X, whether it's with a pen on paper or if you're using electronic charts to actually use the feature where you can draw on your tablet or your phone and make an X marks the spot. Just to remind me when I look at that visual picture, oh yeah, I can't be over there.